what's going on everybody how are we doing today today this is going to be about the Roborock s7 max v this is primarily going to be about the app how to completely set it up then i will send out the robot and have it clean my home and i will show you exactly how the app sets up my house then i'll show you how easy it is to divide the rooms add no go zones show you all the different mopping features all the self-emptying features pretty much everything this app has to offer. I'm gonna to try to go through everything for you. So this video might be a little bit longer than normal, but I really wanna get all the information out there about this amazing robot vacuum. So of course, first you have to have the Me Home app. So you click on that. Easiest way, let me go back to the beginning here. Easiest way, this is the main screen after you click on the Me Home app. So you see this icon on the top right, the plus. You wanna hit that and hit add device. Easiest way to find it quickly is just hit this, just hit this search button on the top right. And I already had Roborock S7 Max V in there and it pulls it right up. And then this is gonna bring up the start of the app basically for this robot. First it's gonna tell you to reset the device, which will re reset the Wi-Fi and have it kind of in Wi-Fi ready mode. So you wanna hold down those two outer buttons. Resetting Wi-Fi. Okay, and then you want to confirm that. The previous page was me setting up my uh, Wi-Fi and password and all that. So you want to go to your Wi-Fi settings and add the Roborock. There we go, this one here. Whoops. Wait for that to connect, and then you want to go back to the app. Connecting to Wi-Fi. Stand by. Wi-Fi connected. So extremely simple, first time trying it, instantly connects, which is great. I think Roborock's build quality and overall ease of use is just amazing. So you want to set this to whatever room you want. I'm going to do the dining room. So I think that's where I'm going to keep it mostly because I will have this mopping and vacuuming. All right, now we're getting further into the app and setting all that up. Uh, you have to accept their agreement all the time. Then it says notes to pick up anything specific. This is a mopping robot, but you cannot have it run over big puddles of water. Definitely want map saving on. So my house is a two-story house. Definitely want to have that checked because it'll save multiple stories up to four, which is really cool. Home with pets. I don't have any pets right now, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it on just because it makes the obstacle avoidance that much better. So we have to accept that. And there should be an update. If you look on the top right corner and there's a red dot there, you want to click that, scroll down, and then there's a firmware update. So you all charge to at least 20% and keep the robot docked for firmware upgrade. All right, let's go ahead and check out the firmware update. Upgrade now, it's got some bug fixes, quick mapping, which is nice. Usually this is a pretty quick process. I guess it really just depends on how much information they're trying to send to the robot. Updating firmware. This may take five to 10 minutes. Alrighty, so the firmware update is complete, which is great. Let's go over some of the settings real quick. Uh, once you map your house, of course, you could have maps. You're going to have different floors on here, upper floor, lower floor, and even basement if you have a basement that's finished that you want cleaned. You can schedule it to clean at a specific time, 8, 8 a.m. every morning, and so on and so forth. Very simple. You can even tell it to clean just your kitchen or just your den or whatever, anything you want. Remote control, if you want to... Drive your robot through this, you can. Personally, I never use this. Then of course you have your cleaning history, which it hasn't ran at all yet. Here's your obstacle avoidance settings. So I got that on, AI environment recognition, which is nice. Less collision mode, obstacle photos. Let's go ahead and turn that on, because then it'll show a photo of a shoe or whatever, say there's something underneath your couch that of course you don't know is there. It'll show you exactly what it is and you can, then you can move it if need be. Uh, pet details, yes. 
I'll have this on for my testing. I'll probably turn this off after my testing just because I don't have pets, but I'm gonna keep it on for now. Fill light. Now oh, that's gonna be like, they have a little light bar in the front, so it's gonna make it a little bit more accurate. So that's all the reactive obstacle avoidance stuff. Robot settings. Uh, you can turn on the button lights, status indicator light, the child lock you can have on, wash settings. So you can have it, basically it's gonna go out in every, right now it's set on 20 minutes, but you can do as low as 10. So every 10 minutes, it's gonna go back and clean the pad as well as fill up the water tank. So being able to set this by time is really, really good because every 10 minutes, that's probably what I would want it at if you really want a deep cleaning on your floors. Washing mode, light, balanced, or deep. I would probably always just set it to deep personally just because I'll probably only have it actually mop maybe once a week if that. Auto empty settings. Of course you want that on. Smart, so smart is it'll go out and clean and it'll recognize how many square feet it cleaned. So if, if you have it just go clean one small room, it's gonna know that and then just do a quick auto empty. If you have it clean your entire house, it's gonna go to maximum setting and it's gonna take longer to suck out all the debris. So that's good to have those settings on there as well. Carpet settings, carpet boost. I always have this on because it, it's going to get deep down into your carpet and get all that fine dust out of there for you. Here is the avoidance mode for the mop. Uh, you can. This is where the mopping pad will lift up. You can have it just stay down at all times. Say if you have all hardwood floors and no carpets or rugs in your house, you probably just want to go ahead and keep it down at all times. But you can touch, basically just turn it on and off. And then the robot voice, this is going to be English, Chinese, and all that stuff. Customer support, your device name, and so on and so forth. Looks like there might actually be another firm. Nope. So let's back out of there. Let's look at a little bit more of these settings. Let's go to this top right icon by the map. This is going to be your room name, floor type, your furniture, and then what obstacles are in there, which is nice. This here is going to be your edit for each room. So you can add no-go zones. And then you can, this is for your full customization, which we will do in a, in a moment after I send this guy out. And then this is your mop and vacuum suction settings and scrub intensity. So I usually run it on balanced. And then when it goes to carpet boost, it'll set it up one more tier, which would be turbo. Or you could always have it on turbo, then when it hits carpet, it'll go to max. Scrub intensity, I always like to have it on maximum water. It's going to do a better job overall mopping. And then you can tell it's docked, it's clean. And that right there is most of the features we're going to see as of right now. So I am going to send this guy out. I'll show you the map that is done, and then we will go over the map, see how easy it is to label the rooms, divide the rooms, add the no-go zones. If you guys don't mind, do me a huge favor, like this video and subscribe. It really does help me out. I plan on doing a ton of videos on this Roborock. This is the most excited I've been for a robot vacuum mop combo, and I really do think it's going to be amazing. So stay tuned for future videos. Let me know in the comments if there's anything specific you want to see on this, and I'll make a video just for you. Alrighty, I just had to map my house. As you can see, it took 15 minutes. 90 square meters is what it says. It's scanned, or at least it traveled. And uh, now we're going to see how well we can change the map around, edit the rooms, and do all that fun stuff. So... Let's go ahead and click on this map icon that's right above the swirly marks here on the right. So we're going to click on edit room. Easily edit rooms, merge, divide, and name every room in your home, which is exactly what we want. 
And first we're going to go through and divide all the rooms. And then after we divide them, that's when we're going to name them. So you basically just click that you want to... Okay, there's one room. Now we'll probably have to divide several times because there's several rooms on my floor plan, of course. Now we're going to move this one over here. And we're going to flip this over. Okay, see how it's changing colors for each division? So very easy to use, which I love. There's a lot of robot vacuums I've tested on this channel, and it makes this process an absolute nightmare. This and then the iRobots are probably the easiest ones to mess with the maps. Pretty much all Roborox are similar to this, and they work great. Same with the iRobots. So now we got to name the rooms, which is really easy. So click on Name, select the room, and this is going to be the kitchen. The blue area is the dining room. Green is living room. Here's anything else you can do with the map. You can name the map, of course. Easily delete it, add no-go zones, and then customize. Let's see what customize does. After customizing your cleanup, each room will be cleaned according to the specific settings. Smart, manual, edit, or reset. So say it, whenever it cleans the kitchen or my dining room here, you can actually tell it exactly how you want it to clean every time. So if you know you have, say you eat dinner often at home with your kids and they always make a mess, you're probably going to want to have this on probably the maximum suction and then the maximum water when it goes towards that area. Then of course, here is your suction power and all that. So there's quiet, balanced, turbo, max, and max plus. Now max plus is new. This is what's gonna give you that 5100 PA suction, which is extremely strong. This is currently the strongest suction power or claim of suction power on any robot vacuum out there on the market as of right now. There was one that Bissell made a couple years ago that, that said it had 6,000, but that thing was really a piece of junk, and I believe they even took it off the market. It was so bad. So I'll be doing testing with all this, you guys. I'll do some tests of it with, say, Turbo, and then I'll run the same test on Max Plus and see if it actually makes a difference or if it's just saying it's more powerful. But yeah, that's pretty much everything on the app from startup to mapping and all that good stuff. The only other thing I guess I could show you real quick is the no-go zones, which is very easy. So if you have a specific area, say you have, you know there's a bunch of cables in the corner of a room, you just go to no-go zone and you basically just put that wherever, say that whole corner was cables or something important, I would just throw it like that. I mean, you can shrink it, but this would work too. And then you hit save and a robot will not go in that area. All right, guys, I know that video is kind of long and probably a little bit boring, but if you were still here, that's because you wanted to learn about the robot and I hope I shared everything that you wanted to know. If you found this video helpful, please like the video. Subscribe, like I said, I'm gonna have a ton more videos on this guy and I'm very excited to do so. Thanks for watching, have a fabulous day and I'll see you guys in the next one.